hey guys, guys and, and welcome, welcome to vlogmas, vlogmas day, day one, morning guys and oh my gosh I cannot believe it is the first day of vlogmas I feel so unprepared every year before vlogmas I tell myself I'm gonna prepare I'm gonna have like a list of things I can do during vlogmas I'm gonna have recipes I want to show you guys I'm gonna plan it all out and then up until vlogmas I'm doing other like Christmas related content and I just don't have time so I don't feel prepared but we'll see so right now I'm just sitting in bed and doing some work as soon as I get this done I'm going to start working on the vlogmas intro I'm gonna do everything I can to try to make this intro work it's so long right now and I'm scared I won't be able to make it short enough and make sense of it so I don't know what I'm gonna do I don't know if you guys are watching this with an intro or without but I really hope I can make the intro work this was such a funny idea in my head when we came up with it if you guys watched it I'm gonna explain it in case it doesn't translate the way that I want it to doing intros without any talking is really difficult sometimes people just don't get the intro because I have to try to tell a story really quickly without any words so so this intro starts off with Sebastian and I planning to buy gifts for people. We're like buying gifts for my mom and my sister. I get my sister, Alexa stop. Okay, I actually have to do something for work really quickly. But anyways, I get my sister an iPad and he gets my sister like video games, Call of Duty. We were trying to think of something that'd be funny. We thought like maybe like Star Wars like, but we didn't have any Lego. So we just went with what we did have, which was video games. And then we show each other what we got, you know, excited about the gifts we're buying for my sister. And he shows me that he gets the video games. And then I pull out the iPad and he realizes my gift is way better than the gift he's gonna be giving. So his sneaky plan is to steal my gift and give it to my sister and puts a can of tomatoes into my bag so that it feels like a similar weight. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. But anyways, and then my sister comes, who is Sebastian, and opens the gift that he gives to her. And it's both of our gifts, and I'm shocked. Kind of like playing off of all of the other intros. We try to do something a little bit similar every year, something that's a little bit mischievous because Sebastian, by nature, is a little bit mischievous. And he does a lot of funny things like that in real life. So we usually just kind of dramatize those things and put them into an intro. So that was the intro. I really hope that I can make it work. As soon as I'm done work, I'm gonna start working on the intro again. Like I said, I'm sitting here planning my day. This is the GoodNotes app I use on my iPad. I bought a planner like a few months ago from Etsy and it's how I keep my life together as much as possible. So I'm hoping that because in previous Vlogmases I was not using a planner, then maybe I will be able to keep my ish together this year and not have like meltdowns because I don't plan well enough in advance to actually have content for the following day. So we'll see. It's really hard to plan Vlogmas though. It's like so difficult because things change every day. Things you plan on doing don't work out and then you feel like you don't have content. But for this year, I don't know if I'm gonna do every day. I mean, I always aim for every day, but I'm thinking that if it gets really stressful with trying to do content and work and Christmas stuff, that maybe what I will do is either not do every day if that's just what works best for my mental health. Or maybe I will do like filler days. So maybe like a Q&A day or like a tag day. Last year I did do every single day and it was the best distraction for me because the pandemic was like the first year I didn't spend Christmas with my family and we're not spending Christmas together again this year, I don't think. I'm less sad about it because I've like, you know, ripped off the band-aid. I've done it once now. That was actually what made it easier for me with Vlogmas last year though, because I didn't have to plan to like take care of all these extra things to have guests coming. So I do have some footage that I wasn't able to edit yet and it was supposed to be its own individual vlog. It's actually of us going and picking up our Christmas tree and taking pictures for our Christmas card this year, which I've already ordered. I 
feel like I've done something productive. They should be here in a couple days and I'll show you guys, but I did want to include that into this vlog because we grabbed our tree before vlogmas started just so that we could actually get a tree this year. There has been a tree shortage from the heat dome that we had in the summer. So I'm going to insert that footage now. And then later on, you guys will see how we bring our tree inside, which should be interesting because it is not wrapped and we didn't consider that when we picked it up. We have arrived at the Christmas tree farm and oh my gosh, this is so much nicer than the other Christmas tree farm we went to before. It's very patchy with brightness from the sun and clouds. So I apologize that the lighting's bad, but it's so cute here and there are enormous trees. Like, they're really big. They're huge. From if, far away, I thought they're just the right size and then you get closer <laughs> and they're just like monsters. I, well, he said they have like 17 foot trees. I would say that one looks like it's like 20 feet. It's massive. Or more, more than 20 feet. The lighting is really bad right now. I hope there's gonna be a nice golden hour. Right now we're just gonna go look for a tree and see what we can find. They have some really nice trees in the back over there that I think are really beautiful. I'm hoping they will have a grand fir that is about 10 feet. That's what we're looking for. It's so cute. They also gave us this little wagon. Last time we didn't have a wagon, but is this not so festive with the red wagon and the red saw? This is our bag of our camera equipment and stuff, but it's so freaking cute here. I feel like this tree here looks like a good tree. I mean, it's gorgeous, but I think it might be too tall. Like, I feel like this might be so cute though. So how tall do you think this one is? I don't know. Also, like, I don't really measure things in feet. Well, how many I'm more of a meters person. I love this one because it's like, look at it. It's perfect in terms of like how full it is. It doesn't it's have very any full. holes. I love this one though. This one's perfect, but it's just, I feel bad if I took it because it's like, so perfect like it's like the most perfect tree if you have like a 16 foot ceiling the lighting's actually pretty good right now should we take some pics sure have to go grab some cash from a little ATM that they have nearby because they don't take cards and we didn't know that before we came here. While we were taking our photos, a couple asked us if we were gonna get the tree that our bag was near and because I was so flustered, I always get really flustered when people notice me like filming or taking pictures or whatever. I always feel like an inconvenience. So I was like, no. And it was actually the tree that we were looking at getting. So I gave away our tree, but then fortunately we did find another really big tree. We marked it off so that we can come pick it up after we're done filming the stuff that we need to film in the living room because otherwise we just won't have enough space to film in there. So hopefully we're gonna come pick it up on Saturday, but you guys will see that footage later on in this vlog. It's supposed to be raining on the weekend, so we wanted to come today. We didn't want to take pictures when it was wet because we are hopefully gonna put together a Christmas card with one of these photos. I don't know that we got the shot because as soon as the couple asked us if we were buying that tree, I got flustered and I put my camera away and didn't take any more pictures. We'll see. Let's hope that something turns out. Every year I say I'm gonna take pictures for a Christmas card and every year same thing happens. Last year we did actually take pictures but we just ended up taking them too late and couldn't get the cards made. I feel like I'm jinxing it. I just have this feeling someone's gonna take Take the tree and rip the tags off and when we come back it's gonna be gone. But if you show interest yeah. in something. Then everyone else wants it. They're like, oh, that's the one. And I wish I was not that person that just like, I wish I could have been like, yeah, that's the I tree know. we want. It happens to me all the time. Stand in front of it, wonder should I get this or not? Someone else sees me, say, like, oh, it. yeah, hmm, I want this too. Okay, I'm gonna have to make this clip short because you guys probably won't be able to hear me with all the crazy rain that's hitting the windshield. And also, I'm not using my main vlog camera with the external mic. I'm just using my like smaller one. We are on our way to go cut down the tree today because we're worried that someone else might try to grab it. The guy that works there said that that sometimes happens, that people will reserve a tree and then someone will move the tags over to another tree. We're just not gonna risk it. So we're going out in what is considered or called an atmospheric river. In other words, it's literally pouring 
raining cats and dogs and we're gonna cut it down and just keep it there we're going to rent a truck a u-haul truck and go pick it up because this tree is much bigger than the previous trees that we've ever gotten it's so so big we don't really want to risk putting it on our like roof hopefully it's not like a long process of cutting it down i feel bad for sebastian so we're grabbing the tree <laughs> Wow. So we got our tree. They were so freaking nice. I was like so embarrassed. They actually drove this little golf cart out there and used a chainsaw and cut it down for us. I was just like, I couldn't believe how nice they were. They were just so freaking sweet. If you guys live in the Lower Mainland, absolutely go to Oh Christmas Tree Farm. They are like top notch, the absolute best. Cannot say enough good things about them. So it is the day we go pick up our tree. We haven't finished filming all the things that we need to get done before having the tree in the house. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave the tree outside for like a night or two. We have switched vehicles. We are now in the U-Haul. We had a few hiccups, but we are on our way. I think it should fit in the back of the truck. Yeah. Because we don't have any rope, right? Do we have rope? No, we don't have anything. Okay, great. <laughs> Love how prepared we are for this. We have the tree, it's in the back. It seems like it's growing. Every time we see it, it seems to be bigger. So since this tree is so big, I don't know if I'm gonna have a tree topper this year. I might do something similar to what I have on my other tree. I don't think there's any way I'm gonna fit my angel on there. I'm not like super attached to the angel. It's just that I have never found a tree topper I really loved. So I've always just stuck with the one that I've had forever. And as a child, we always had an angel on our tree. So I figured I would just kind of stick with that tradition, but I'm not committed to it or anything. So maybe this year I'll do like bows at the top or some sprays, some ribbon or something. Maybe the craziest part of the tree to me is that I can't even move it. So it's a little later. I made a little bit of progress on my intro. I got it down to like 35 seconds, but my last year's intro was 27 seconds. And I just feel like I'm gonna struggle to find a part of a song that will be 35 seconds long. So I'm gonna try to figure out how to shorten it even further, but I'm taking a little intermission to have a snack. I haven't eaten lunch today. We don't have any groceries because we're in a state of emergency right now here in BC. We have a lot of flooding going on. And for whatever reason, every time there's any kind of state of emergency, Everyone flocks to the stores and buys everything. So there was really not a lot of stuff that we could buy, but I'm gonna have this as a snack to hold me over until I can have dinner. These are amazing. I don't remember if I've ever talked about these before, but these are the Quest tortilla style protein chips. They taste like actual Doritos. They're incredible but they're actually made with protein powder and they're so good. This is my favorite kind. It's the spicy sweet chili. This to me tastes very similar to the zesty taco, I think it is from Ariba. Because they're a specialty product though, they're not inexpensive. So if you can get them on sale, definitely try them. These are like three something a bag, but because I'm trying to keep my protein intake high, I justify having them here and there because they're 19 grams of protein, I think. Yeah, 19 grams of protein. So I get my protein and I have something that holds me over. Whenever I need something really quickly, this is like a great thing to have. But I thought I would show you guys some things that I picked up recently. I just got a couple packages in the mail, some from Sephora. This is actually from the Sephora sale that they had early November. I just got my stuff. I guess they were super backed up with their orders, so it took forever for me to get my stuff and then I have some stuff here from Lush which I'm very excited about I can't wait to use it it's December 1st now I can dig into my Lush holiday stash um, but first I'm gonna have my chips so good this is what they look like they look like normal chips they taste like normal chips and the seasoning is so good 
And for anyone who's doing like keto or Atkins, there's only five grams of carbs. And one of those grams is from dietary fiber. The macros on them are great. One bag is 140 calories and it always fills me up. So I'm gonna start with these Sephora packages. So the first thing I got was this small version of the Orbe Superfine Hairspray. It's like their travel size. I've heard a lot of great things about this hairspray, so I wanted to try it, but I didn't want to invest in the big bottle because it's like super expensive. And I do have their like texturizing spray in the big bottle, which I do really like. So I wanted to give that a shot. I got the Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Foundation, and I got it in this shade light medium 14. Apparently this is one of the makeup artist go-to foundations. It's up there with the Armani Luminous Silk, which is my favorite foundation. And apparently this is the foundation that Kylie Jenner's makeup artist uses on her. Apparently in a video with Patrick Starr, he was doing his makeup and didn't want to share which foundation he was using. If he doesn't want to tell anyone, then it must be really good. I'm really excited to see how this performs. Although I think this might be my summer color. Color. Oh, it's very thin. The color is really nice. It's super thin. It's almost like watery. It's much thinner than the Armani Luminous Silk and it has like a glowy finish. I feel like it has a really nice finish. It seems very sheer, like maybe it's buildable, but right now it's sheer. So maybe it's something you would want to use concealer over areas where you have like additional concerns or redness. I can't wait to try it out though. It matches my hand perfectly, so that's great. But unfortunately, my face is not as dark as my hands. So I might have to use some self tanner before I use it. Is this a sample or did I pay for this? I can't remember. I also got the Tatcha Liquid Sulk Canvas Featherweight Protector Primer. I don't remember if this was, if this was a sample or if I bought it. I kind of feel like I bought it. I used the Tatcha primer in like the pot that's kind of like a paste consistency and it's really, really good. So I wanted to try the liquid version. I also got the Hypnos Absolute de Noir mascara. Oh, I guess I must have just changed it. Ultra Black Volume Mascara. They must have changed the name, but this is a mascara I always use. It's my go-to and I guess this is the new, there's shadow on it because I have a light set up behind you guys. I have my ring light on. You guys see this? So that's what it looks like. And then I got this Milk Makeup Kush Mascara. This had really high reviews. I always try out new mascaras, but I always end up going back to the same one. But I'm always hopeful to find like new good mascaras. So I try almost all of them out. Mascara is like my, my favorite makeup product. I feel like I can definitely tell it's Vlogmas when I've spent the entire day in pajamas because I was too busy to get dressed. That is such a Vlogmas thing. So this is what it looks like. It's kind of funny. It almost looks like my concealer here. It's very small. It feels like nice. This feels really heavy. The package feels nice. It almost feels like a small sample size because the, the handle's so small. This is what the brush looks like. It seems more like a dry mascara because not a lot is coming out. It doesn't seem gloopy. It seems very dry. Probably good for thickening, which is what I like mascaras for. The next thing I have here is this Artist Couture Diamond Glow Powder and it's in the shade Illuminati. I have wanted this stuff. I'm not even joking. I remember seeing this probably when I first moved to Vancouver on someone's Instagram account and they had the most gorgeous highlight and then I tried to buy the product but it was always sold out. Then I completely forgot about it and then all of a sudden I saw that they were selling this brand at Sephora. This color was always sold out and it was available and I was so excited. So what I like about this highlighter is it looks wet when you apply it and I always use the MAC Extra Dimension Skin Finish Highlighter, which is super glowy and also has that like wet look. I wanna put it on right now. I don't have any other makeup on, so I'm just gonna put some on the back of my hand. There's a huge shadow when I try to like show you guys. I have to show you over here. Wow, it's very pretty. It totally has that wet look. It's not like super glittery or anything. Very annoyed with the shadow from the microphone. Okay, I hope you guys can still hear me properly. This is what it looks like. It's very like shiny, which I love. So I'm gonna do some on my cheekbones and see what it looks like. Oh my God, that is so 
pretty. Applied it with my fingers, so it's kind of crap, but <laughs> wow, I love it. That is so pretty. It's so glowy. <sighs> Mike is back. Very happy with that. The next thing I got is the Olaplex Hair Perfector in number three. I apologize for this shadow. And I already have this upstairs. I've been using this once a week lately because ever since I moved down here, I don't know what it is with the water maybe or something, but my hair is a lot more fragile and it just breaks off so easily. So like most of my hair is actually like shoulder length and the rest of it is just like these straggly little strand. I need a haircut really badly, but even still when I get my hair cut, the ends are just so broken off and most of my hair is just like up here. So I've been trying to take better care of my hair. I've been using oils and stuff like that and also using this, like I said, once a week. So moving on to the last thing, for that reason, I invested in the Orbe Gold Lust Collection. This was quite pricey. I think this was $145 either with or without the coupon. I can't remember. Their products are insanely expensive, but I figured I would try and see if this is gonna help my sad, sad hair. This is what the set looks like. I've already tried the shampoo. I bought a smaller size of it, which was also very expensive. And I did like it, but I didn't try any of the other products with it. So I thought I would try the conditioner and the oil as well. The oil always wins like Allure Awards and whatnot. So I wanted to try that. And it has a ton of like five-star ratings on Sephora. And it smells really nice. Their products all have a really strong fragrance. I could see it being off-putting for some people. To me, it reminds me of the white tea scent that Weston Hotels use, and I love that smell. It always reminds me of Christmas, so I associate this smell with Christmas, which is fitting since I got it this time of year. This is the Gold Lust Repair Conditioner, and these are, I think, eight ounces. I don't remember. Yeah, 8.5 ounces for the shampoo and the conditioner. I'll keep you guys posted and let you know what I think and if they are worth the price or not. Part of me just feels like they're not going to be worth the price because I don't know how you justify spending that much money on shampoo and conditioner. Okay, I think that's everything I got from Sephora apart from some samples. Moving on to Lush stuff. It smells incredible. Okay, so the first thing I have here is a bubble bar. This is the North Pole Bubble Bar. It's so cute. So it says it has Brazilian orange clove bud and Divana oil. It says it's sweet and spicy, which I agree with. I feel like it smells like everything from Lush, but definitely has a little bit of spice. And then this part is like cocoa butter. So this melts and makes your skin really nice and moisturize. I'm so excited to use this one. I hope that this North Pole body melt thing has a lot of gold shimmer. It looks very shimmery and gold. I love when it makes your water so pretty. My favorite bubble bar from Lush is their Sunnyside bubble bar because it makes your water look like a shimmery golden galaxy. It looks like the sun is literally inside your tub. It's just so pretty. And it doesn't just look like glitter. It's like galaxy. But anyways, I hope that it will do the same thing because this looks very gold. So the next Next thing I have here, this one is called You Shall Go to the Ball. This is one of their bath bombs. It has like this golden shimmer that is just so, so pretty. It smells like everything else from Lush. To me, they all smell the same. It says, drop this fizzer into water and delight in its sweet strawberry scented aroma as it fills the room thanks to a blend of Sicilian lemon oil and Tonka Absolute. So honestly, I never buy anything because of the benefits. I know that they do have things in there to make your skin more hydrated or more soft, but honestly, I just buy them based on how they smell and mostly whether or not they're cute. So the next one I have here, it's so glittery. It's so pretty. Glitter is flying everywhere. <laughs> Look at my fingers. I'm not complaining. You guys know I love glitter. Okay, so this is the Snow Fairy Bath Bomb and it smells like all the other Snow Fairy products. That one, I will say, it does have a distinct smell. It smells like bubble gum, which I find very pleasing. I know a lot of people don't like the Snow Fairy scent, but I do. It says, ultra sweet cotton candy Snow Fairy scent. Oh, it says cotton candy. Relax and enjoy the dazzling display of colors as she fizzes across the surface of your bath, leaving pink swirls and shimmering sparkles in her wake. Her gorgeous cotton candy scent is made 
made of cruelty-free synthetic musk for a fun and comforting bathing experience you can enjoy all season long. I love the Snow Fairy scent. I have it in a body wash as well. And the next one I have, this is the Shoot for the Stars bath bomb. And I got it because it has these gold pieces here. And I thought maybe those were bubble bar pieces. Sometimes they'll kind of mix the two. So this is actually cocoa butter. It's not the bubble bar that I thought it was, but that's okay. I hope that the gold will melt into the tub and it'll be extra pretty. So it says, stay very still to see the swirling colors of the night sky dazzle in your tub alongside glittery golden stars filled with skin softening cocoa butter. Okay. That sounds so pretty. And this smells divine. I absolutely love it. It has obviously the lush quality to the smell, but it's just like even more luxurious smelling. So I'm very excited. I, I feel like I've bought this one in the past because it does seem very familiar to me. And the next one here is the golden pudding, a golden wonder scented delight that fizzes into streams of pink, yellow, and orange. I got it because it is glittery and gold has almost like a soapy smell to it like true soap smell, like a dove bar or something. It has that kind of scent to it, but also like a little bit lemony, citrusy and uplifting. Fans of our Golden Wonder Bath Bomb of holidays past will revel in this one. I used to love the Golden Wonder Bath Bomb. My fingers are turning gold, so I'm hopeful that this will look really pretty in the water. Felt like they didn't have a lot of bubble bars this year, which made me sad because that is my favorite Lush product. I love their bubble bars. I love having bubble baths and bath bombs are nice, but I always want to have bubbles and bath bombs do not give you that. So I was disappointed that most of the Christmas stuff was bath bombs, but I got them anyway. Okay. So this is the snow fairy lights. I guess it's probably also snow, snow fairy scented. This is what it looks like and it has stuff in it. So can you hear that? I love that Lush understands people like me who love glitter. Lighting's actually kind of bad. It's very artificial right now, but you guys can see what it looks like outside. If I didn't have this light, it would be awful right now. Packed with our sweetest cotton candy scent, this magical fizzer can be used for three different baths with three different experiences. So the pink star dissolves into neon pink waters. The snowflake on top releases plastic free sparkles for a glittery good time. And then inside, and then inside there's bath bomb confetti that'll turn your tub into a sea of floating fairy lights. That sounds so beautiful. So the last thing I got is a bubble bar and I would have bought more bubble bars but like I said they didn't have very many this year which surprises me because I feel like everyone loves bubble bars so I got the snow fairy roll and this is also in the snow fairy scent it's like this neon pink color my battery is flashing so it's gonna die in a second it doesn't describe what it will look like take a dip with the bubblegum sweetness of snow fairy so here it says bubblegum but then they also say got candy, I don't know. I'm hoping that this will create really pretty bath water, but we will see. So that's it for the haul. I'm gonna charge my battery and I will catch up with you guys after. Yeah, and do you wanna grab the advent calendars? We haven't even opened them yet. One of our yearly Vlogmas rituals is to open our advent calendar on camera. This year they had really ugly <laughs> advent calendars. This one is the one I always get with like the Santa here, but then they had a lot of pink ones that looked almost exactly like that, but with this Santa. And this Santa just kind of creeps me out. I don't know why. So let's go and see who can get it first. There it is. I got it. No. Did you look for it? I feel like you did. Ooh, it's a Kinder Bar. Mmm. All right. Should I make real food? Okay, so for dinner tonight, as I said earlier, people have been panic buying, so there's like literally nothing in the grocery store. Not even wraps. We had to get the small ones. We normally get the big ones for what we're going to make. Oops. And go to, the, to a different store. Yeah, so he went to go grab some wraps for dinner because we're going to make tortilla pizza. I wanted to make something fast tonight. I had a lot of editing to do on the intro, which I finally mostly finished. It's much longer than it normally is. I think it's like 39 seconds and the usual intro is like 27, 28 seconds, but there was just too many scenes. If I like cut it down, it wouldn't make any sense. This is basically as short as I can get it without confusing everyone. Maybe skip it if it's too long for you, but yeah. So we didn't plan anything extravagant for dinner tonight. We're making tortilla pizzas, which was something that I started eating when was it like May? Yeah. And we literally ate them. I'm not joking every single freaking night. And they're so good. They're so good that they taste like ordering pizza. It tastes like takeout. 
Yeah. So we're gonna do that for dinner, but mostly out of necessity because there really is no food in the grocery stores. We're gonna try, I think, one in the air fryer and then some in the oven like we normally do. It's lucky that we got these smaller ones. I don't think a big one would fit in there. So what we do is we bake our wraps for a couple minutes first. We poke some holes in them because they otherwise will kind of puff up. And then we will add the sauce. The most important part is a good pizza sauce. And the one that we love using is the Rayo's or Rao's homemade pizza sauce. It's so freaking good. It tastes like restaurant quality. in here do you think i just feel like this is gonna be a fail all right the pizzas are done or well not done but we're ready to put them in the oven we're gonna put them in for 10 minutes all right moment of truth <gasps> oh okay that's yours that's clearly yours try it and see it like why how long do we have that in there for the air fryer is just way more powerful i should have had it in there for what like five minutes well the underside looks good yeah but it's not the right should we make another one i could yeah. just do it for like five minutes and then check Isn't on it, it. <laughs> damn the one time we got it right i didn't record it so this is what it looks like it's a little bit soft but that's okay, we can continue to experiment. This looks good. Mm. Yum. We could have probably let them go in for a little bit longer, but That's we were fine. getting impatient. We normally add feta and mushrooms, but both of those ingredients that we had ended up being bad. But Still so good. Mm -hmm. How was that one? Really good. We had um, Domino's the other night. It was really good too, but it's not as good as this. Let me try. This is much better. Is it? Yeah. I feel like the cheese looks really good on this. The bottom is too soft on this though. I have to figure out the right temp. I like it though. It reminds me more of real pizza. Bit soft? Mm -hmm. You guys should definitely try these out. If you've never had a tortilla pizza, I was skeptical because you know, as a kid, we always had like tortilla pizzas and that kind of thing at birthday parties, but it was really soft. The one key I think is pre-toasting the tortilla shell so that it gets nice and crispy and then it tastes like a thin crust pizza and the pizza sauce mm. so so good so good that we literally ate this every single day for we did for a while how many months i don't want to talk about it okay <laughs> Okay, so we brought the tree in and it is still 11 feet or a little over 11 Christmas tree massacre over here. Here's the tree. It does have a couple spots where there's no branches growing out. So I'm going to take some of these ends after and I'm going to zip tie them in you can see right there there's a gap so there is the tree it smells so christmasy in here now that's gonna be it for vlogmas day one whatever the coffee machine the coffee machine's going off in the background can you believe for vlogmas day one i have a tree in the house wow a real tree i mean this has, has happened before but not during vlogmas and <laughs> vlogmas it's usually like the sixth or like the eighth that we get it so anyways that's gonna be it for the vlog look forward to tomorrow's vlog i'm gonna be meeting up with my sister we're gonna be going to a christmas market so that should be a lot of fun thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you all for vlogmas day two bye guys bye Christmas.